about the last couple of weeks, we've had some great uh, videos we've been watching. we got another one coming up that uh, is on the universe and the stars and everything else that will blow your mind. Just absolutely incredible what God has done, how he's made uh, all the different stars and everything else, and this man puts it in such a way that really makes you sit there with your mouth open going, wow, I never saw that before, and it's just amazing. So if you can be here, be here with us on that, okay? When is that? Uh, sun, uh, Wednesday night at 6.30. Wednesday night, 6.30. And we do it right in here. We watch it on the, on the big TV. So praise God. Praise God. So. Let's go before the Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for your word. It's your word. Lord, let us come and hear what you have to say today, Lord God. Open our ears to hear. Open our eyes to see, Lord God. And give us hearts to receive what you have. Lord, if it's something from you, it's got to be amazing. So, Lord God, we come and humble ourselves and seek you today. And we'll give you all the glory and the honor for it. For you will honor holy. You alone are worthy. Yes. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. There we go. Amen. We're going to look at something today. Dead to sin and alive to God. Dead to sin. Did you know you're dead to sin? According to the word of God, you are dead to sin. It has no more power over you. But far too often as believers, we tend to forget that. We tend to start thinking, well, I'm, I'm you know, doing this, I get mad, I get angry, I do this, I get disappointed, everything else. All these th different things are going on in my life, and we start thinking, wow, if I'm dead to sin, what in the world is going on here? Why am I, if I got all these issues going on, if I'm dead to sin? Is the Word of God true? Yes. Nod your head like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's true, yeah. Yes. Well, you guys have got this now, right? <laughs> Praise God. But we are alive to Him. We're alive to Him. Before I met Him, I was as dead as you could get. I was deader than the doornail. So, well, I guess the doornail would be kind of dead, wouldn't it? I hadn't seen a live doornail yet. But, but praise God Almighty, I was dead as I could be. But He brought me to life. Amen. So we're going to take a look at this and see if I am dead to sin and alive to God. Why do I have all these issues that keep bothering me all the time? And I haven't found much of anyone that doesn't have at least something. You get irritated, you get prideful, you get whatever. And before you know it, you get into something and you get real all worked up about something. And you get into sin, right? So we're going to take a look at this. Romans 6, 2 says, How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? It says that we have died to sin. So why does it rule so easily in my mortal body, right? And far too often we think, well, I don't have any sin in us. And me, I'm not, I don't know what you're talking about, man. Uh, I don't have any problem with any of that. Well, read uh, 1 John uh, 1, 8 that says, If we say we have no sin in us, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. 1 John 1, 8. I think John knew the word, knew the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just going out on a limb, but I believe that John, oh, yeah. the apostle, knew Jesus as his Savior. And he's writing, he didn't write that to the church, to the local bar and go put it up on the bulletin board at the local bar, did he? No, he's writing it to other believers, and he's saying, if we say we have no sin in us, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But first one, John 1 9 says, but if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So what's going on here? How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? See, it's one thing if we're going along and we accidentally trip and fall, right? Mm -hmm. We're minding our own business and the enemy sets up all these traps for us. I've been caught in more than one of those traps, right? I mean, you can't do anything. You can't go anywhere. You can't watch a commercial for a hamburger without some kind of temptation coming along. Who in the world ever thought of having a, a, a woman in a bikini weighs 10 pounds for a burger commercial? Yeah. I mean, that, those two don't seem to go together real well to me. You know, but here they are. she got the biggest hamburger you can possibly imagine instead of trying to take a bite out of that thing. 
She couldn't weigh 90 pounds if she was soaking wet. Or she ain't got nothing on to get wet, right? Right. I mean, let's get serious about this, right? But, okay, so we're marching on down this road, and all of a sudden the enemy sets up a trap and we fall in a hole, right? Well, we climb ourselves back up say, Lord, forgive me. Wash me and cleanse me. I, I got myself dirty, right? He gives us his robes of righteousness that are white and pure and holy, and I go around long and stain it. <laughs> That's what he's talking about there in 1 John 1, 8 and 9. So we come and say, oh, I did it, Lord. Forgive me. Take that away. I don't want that in my life. And I always say I hold my hands open because I don't want to hold on to my sin. But see, how can sin, how can we uh, still live in it? By living in it, it's giving the, the connotation that we're, it's a lifestyle. To where all of a sudden, well, God understands that I do this. You know, He understands that I got a right to be mad, right? I got a right to be hurt. I got a right to be angry. I, I'm so amazing, I can't believe myself, so I got a right to be full of pride, right? That's what we tend to think. That's what we tend to do. So, how if, is it if we are dead to sin, how do we continue to live in it? So, let's see, see what it does, what it says. Verse 3, or do you not know that as many as us were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? In other words, if we are given our life over to the Lord Jesus Christ and we have been surrounded and immersed in him, all of a sudden we are baptized into his death. I have died. I have died. Me has died. Not, not just sin. I haven't just given up the sin and all that stuff, but I have died is what it's saying. Amen? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. I was buried. I died, and I was buried, right? Praise God that he knows what he's doing. And the rest of the verse goes on to say, And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So it's saying that I died. I was buried, and now I have been risen again, just as he was raised from the dead. Let's read that again. Just as he was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. We have been dead, buried, and resurrected, amen, into life. We were talking about a few weeks ago how in this world we're born, right? We live a life and then we die. We come from birth or life and we're working our way towards death right in the spirit world it's the exact opposite we're dead i was dead as i could get but he brings me to life amen, amen. the exact opposite i'm going on to eternal life to where god almighty is going to welcome me into his house and i can live with him forever amen isn't that awesome how in the world does he do that stuff? He's God. That's how he does that stuff. I don't know how he does all that stuff. He just does it. But I was raised from the dead. Say, I was raised from the dead. I was raised from the dead. Praise God. Isn't that awesome? That I've been raised out of the miry clay that I was in. I got myself into it. I can't say, well, did you see what that other guy did? You know? We say that a lot. Well, uh, can you imagine? Again, I've said this so many times, but you see the vision of of God on the throne, God the Father on the judgment throne, right? And all the people are lined up on judgment day. And you see this long line meandering up to the, the throne of God most high. And it comes your turn. And he starts showing you the video of the things you've done over your life. And here it comes on one of those times, one of those times when I messed up. And he'll say, what did you do there? And I'll say, well, but did you see what they got? It was him right back there. See what he just did? No, no, no. I, I, they're behind you in line. I'll get to them in a minute, right? But right now, I want to know what did you do? I kind of got mad and said some things I shouldn't have said. I did it. If we confess our sins. I did it. I did it. Doesn't matter what anyone else has done. Jesus said, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Doesn't mean at all anything about what they do. 
He's just telling me to treat them the way I want them to treat me. It has nothing to do with whether they do it all, they're all great and wonderful and all that to me all the time or not. They can kick me in the teeth, but I'm still supposed to say, ah, oh, man, what can I do for you? Oh, you need your yard mow today? Well, I'll go mow your yard today. Or whatever, right? Anything. But our God is there to forgive us and wash us and cleanse us, amen? amen. But I was raised from the dead, raised out of all that junk that had me in bondage so much. And I want to walk in that newness of life. Not only have I been forgiven, but I can walk daily in a, a, a victorious life. You don't want victory. You don't want a victorious life. Far too often as Christians, we tend to not have a very victorious life. And over all kinds of different things, right? I want to live a pure and holy life before God Almighty. And I want to please Him. I want to do whatever He says to do. And again, like I've said before, this is how I came to the Lord. How can I uh, mess up again if I'm doing what God Almighty tells me to do? And I found out the hard way that any time I'm doing it my way, I did it my way. No. And always, I always do it the wrong way. It's always the wrong thing. I could swear I was doing the right thing, and it's always the wrong thing. It's like you could really count on it. If I could have figured it out, I could have just done the opposite of what I thought was the right thing to do, and it, it would have worked out perfect, but I'm not that smart, see? Not no, sure. no, 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 no. But don't agree with that now. I don't know why I'm not smart enough. But it's true anyway, whether you agree or not. But I want to walk in that newness of life. He's given me newness of life. And I want to walk in it daily. I want to walk in His power and His authority. Remember the, the, uh, the story in the book of Acts where Peter is walking down the street and his shadow casting over yes. people that are sitting on the side of the street, mm -hmm. and they're healed mm -hmm. from his shadow. Yeah. Amen. You think he was out running around with his wife at the same time? No. I think not. I think not. I don't think he was uh, getting mad at this one and that one or doing anything, doubting this and everything else. No. He was living a holy life before God Most High. He was walking in that newness of life that God Almighty gave him. So I want to walk in that. So we should walk in newness of life. Verse 5, so if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, which we have, if you're a born-again believer in Jesus Christ, you have been united together with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Has he got any defeat in his resurrection right now? None whatsoever. He lives powerful. He sits at the right hand of God the Father, Almighty, to judge the living and the dead. Amen. He comes. He's got it. I, I want to be like him. Amen. I should be in the likeness of his resurrection. Complete victory, complete authority, peace, joy, everything else, right? So I should also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this. That our old man was crucified with him. That the body of sin may be done away with. That we should no longer be slaves to sin. My goodness. Our old man, knowing this. See, we got to know this. Far too often we tend to doubt this because the old man keeps resurrecting all the time, you know. Well, who's, who's, who's right there? Do you see that in the Word of God anywhere where the old man keeps resurrecting? Uh, again, we've known a lady from Sri Lanka called Sister Vera Vikramaratna. And she taught us that she would say, don't take, if you've got, I'm glad Sister Beth isn't here right now. She's telling me for making a cat reference. But she said, if, you, if you've got an old dead cat, some old sin that you've gotten victory over, and every once in a while you drag it up and throw it back up on the front porch, right? <laughs> Don't drag the dead cat back up on the front porch. Leave it dead, right? Oh, but I, that just the my old flesh just keep rising up again on me, and I keep losing it. And, and uh, see, that's, I got mad the other day, and I shouldn't have done that. But that's an old dead cat keeps dragging up on the front porch. Leave that sucker buried, man. Let him go, right? But knowing this, I have to know that my old man is crucified. 
it, it was, was crucified with him. When he was crucified, when was I crucified? He was crucified about 2,000 years ago, wasn't he? That's when I got crucified. I didn't know it at the time, but I was crucified at the same time that he was. Am I, re re am I reading that wrong? Yeah, no. No, it's, that's what it says, isn't it? Oh, yes, boy, I'm glad. Why did I have been the more words? That's good. But no, I was. My old man was crucified with him. Mm -hmm. That why? That this body of sin might be done away with. I don't have to let it rule and reign over me. I don't have to obey its lusts. Right? The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, right? No one can tell me what to do. I'm, you know, pride. That's pride. You ain't my boss. You ain't the boss of me. That's the new thing, right? Of course, if you've ever, ever had a teenager, you know that never happens out of them, right? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I've had a few teenagers, and they do the same thing big time. They'll let you know, you ain't the boss of me. Well, part, unfortunately, we turn into teenagers a lot when it comes to God. We'll pick and choose some of the things we want. Oh, I like this part. I'll take that one and blessings. I want them blessings. But then it says, if you do this, this will happen. Right? Again, if my people, which are called by my name, <laughs> will humble themselves and pray. Think like this. Well, humble themselves. I need you. Pray. I need to speak something out. Got to say something. And seek my face. I need to see you, Lord God. And turn from their wicked ways. Lord, I don't want anything to do with anything that's not of you, Lord God. I don't want to hold on to sin. Because we do hold on to sin. I got the right to be mad. I, I really like this thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. I want that thing. Right? Whether it's alcohol or drugs or, or smoking or anything else. Whatever it is that's got you by the throat. Oh, I like this, though. You know, it's not going to kill me. Well, all right. Uh, but if we give that up, he says... If we do all that, he says, then will I hear from heaven. Wow. Then will I hear from heaven. I'll forgive your sins and heal your land. I need my land healed, man. I need my land healed. But if I'm holding back and I can do this myself, I ain't got to humble myself at all. I don't have to, to pray. I don't have to seek his face. I'm just well Lord. I, I gave my life to him in 1976, and you know, I, I, I just like telling your wife, told my wife I loved her when I got married. You know, and uh, if the changes, I'll let her know. That kind of business, right? But far too often we do that with God. Well, I gave my life to him in 1976, and, and you know, if it changes, I'll let him know. No, we need to pray. We need to say something. I need to see you, Lord God. Again, like I was saying a minute ago, if I'm seeing him instead of seeing all these different things, my sickness and disease and my finances and my needs and my wants and my wife and everything else, what am I seeing? I'm seeing all this. I need to see him. I need to seek his face. I need to see you, Lord God. Then I get all this other stuff out of the way, and all of a sudden, then he hears. Kind of gives you the... The impression that as long as we're coming, oh Lord, give me the oh, you see this and go, oh Lord, my rent's due and I'm about to get the house repossessed and the, and the car's about to be taken back and everything else. He said, there on. Are you done yet? Are you done yet? You know, can we get down to, to, to some business here? He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all this stuff will be taken care of. What a deal! I like that deal. Yes, I like that deal. And it works. That's exactly right. It works. I can stop and say anytime my life goes crazy. Does your life ever go crazy? Yeah, my life like this. Because if you're do this or it go. You're breathing, so then you got problems going on in your life. So just, just to let you know. So just a while. I ain't got no problems here, but they me. I've had, I've told you before, I've been preaching from this pulpit and had people turn, a, a wife turn to her husband and say, Is he talking about us? And, uh, two weeks later, they were gone. Like, uh, no, I'm not here to point out your sin to everybody. Everybody else has got their own to deal with. Amen. Amen. They've got their own problems to deal with. Jesus said, don't worry about today. 
tomorrow, tomorrow, today's got enough to worry about on its own, right? I got enough to worry about on its own, right? But if I'm seeking Him, I don't have to worry about all this mess down here. Praise God. I like this stuff myself. I don't know. But that the body of sin might be done away with. So I don't have to have that sin living and ruling over me. That we should no longer be slaves to sin. I don't like, I've been a slave to sin before. And if you were ever not a believer, you were a slave to sin. And sometimes we can even seem like that when we are a believer. We're allowing something to rule and reign over us to where we're a slave to lust or we're a slave to this or that or whatever. Doesn't matter. But we should not, should no longer be slaves to sin. Right? Praise God. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ. We know that. We know that our old sin... Now this is actually out of the New Living Translation. This is uh, the New King James. And this is the same verse out of the New Living Translation. I like the way it puts it a little bit different. We know that our old sinful selves were like old sinful self. Uh, were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. Sin loses its power over me. Because see, before I, I had been given over to it. Right? I had been given over to the sin. I was, yeah, man, let's go all the way. I was all in, right? But then when I gave my life to the Lord, the enemy just said, oh, well, then forget it. He's gotten saved now. I'll just leave him alone. That ever happen to anyone? <laughs> no. In the history of never. You know? Did the enemy leave Peter alone? No. When he says, uh, oh, I know you're the Christ. What, the next day? He says, I don't even know who you're talking about, man. I don't know that fellow. Never knew him. What Jesus says, hey, go tell Peter and the rest of the disciples, I'm going to meet them. It's okay. Don't worry about it. I've given you, I've forgiven you. But my old sinful self was crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. I need it to lose its power. And it has because my old sinful self was crucified with him. Amen? Say amen. Amen. See, when we get saved, we accept that Jesus died as our substitute to cleanse us from our defilement, right? I defiled myself. I defiled myself. And I'll tell that to everyone, and I'll put it on the Internet, right? It'll be on the Internet tomorrow. I defiled myself by the things I was doing. Over and over and over again, in April 1976, I gave my life to Him. And He cleansed me, and I accepted that. See, that's the beauty of it. I realized what he had done. Let's take a look at what it says here. We didn't say, Oh Lord, come and die for me. I'm a sinner. No. We realized he had already done it. Right? He's already done it. I didn't say, Oh Lord, come and die for me all over again. No. He did that and all I did was realize and put my faith in the fact yes. that he's already done it. Amen. He's already won. He's already given me that, that cleansing fountain of His blood. He's come and taken away my sins. And again, I, I've said before in the Old Testament, I think it's in Jeremiah, where it's talking about Joshua, which is not the Joshua of the, uh, you know, Moses' successor. But it's the chief priest was standing. It was a picture in heaven of where Joshua the chief priest was standing in heaven along with the Father and the Son and Satan. And the Satan is accusing the brethren, of course. And Joshua is standing there in his robes, but they are filthy. They are filthy. As a matter of fact, if you look up the way that is worded, it means it is in he is covered in his own excrement. His stuff. Stuff that he did. Ooh, does that sound familiar? Stuff that I did was all over me. And Jesus said, Take that old dirty thing off of him. Give him a nice, clean, new robe. And he said, put a new turban on his head, a clean turban on his head. Helmet of salvation, it almost sounds like, right? Yeah. Let him know up here and here, I've been forgiven, I've been cleansed. And he said, put shoes on his feet. 
What did he tell Moses when Moses first saw him? Take the shoes off your feet, son. You ain't worthy to be in my presence. Now he's saying, put shoes on his feet. Because I'm welcoming him into my house. People won't come into my house barefoot, praise God. You don't have to do all that. It's not about what we do or what we don't do. It's about him, amen? We just realize what he did and accepted it. Thank you, Lord, that you gave me new life. You cleansed me and washed me and took my sins away. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, so it is with dying to our old self, right? Let me die to my old self. And we get the idea that that's, I've got to do that. Where do we get that idea at? Because it's, we have been crucified with Christ, it says. So I've got to die? Wait a minute, it says I, I've already died. Didn't we just read, read that? Didn't we just go through all that? We've been crucified. We did die with him. It's already done. But for some reason, we get the opposite idea that I've got to do this, and I've got to do that, and I've got to work this, and I've got to do this. We're going back under the law. You know, remember the law that says, Thou shalt do this, and thou shalt do that, and thou shalt not do this, and thou shalt not do that? Mm -hmm. It's not about me doing anything at all anymore. It's about what he did. It is over. It is done. We have been crucified with him. It's over. And all I have to do is say, wow, thank you, Lord. You've taken that away. We get it so backwards sometimes. Look at verse 7. It says, for he who has died has been freed from sin. You're dead, right? Say, I'm dead. I'm dead. Praise God, I'm dead. Yes. Praise God, I'm dead. Because that old man just loved living his life the way he wanted to and doing whatever he wanted to do, when he wanted to do it. Now, I don't want nothing. I can do nothing, right? Jesus said that he can do nothing of himself. Only what he sees the Father in heaven doing. So if he can do nothing, I know, why do I get on my whole high horse, you know? I can do this, I can do that. No, I can't do nothing. The more we realize that I can do nothing, and it has nothing to do with thou shalt do this or do, do that or anything else. We're under the, the Abrahamic covenant, if you will, where, a, where God made a covenant with Abraham where he said, I will make a covenant between me and you. Mm -hmm. And all Abraham had to do was say, okay, I believe that. If God said it, do you think it's good enough? I think it's good enough if God, if God said it. And all I got to do is say, okay, right? I believe that. I receive that, right? Does it matter whether I believe it or not? doesn't matter a bit at all. Whether I believe it or not, I need to receive it. I need to receive it. Lord, thank you that you have forgiven me. Thank you that you have given me freedom from the sin that used to reign over me, rule over me. For decades, well, for about a decade, as a believer, I struggled with sin that was ruling over me. I did, as a believer. And a lot of people will say, well, don't, you know, well, pastors get up and say, well, I'm, I'm perfect, brother. You know, you should be like me, and I, I'm doing all. No, you're not. You're not all that in a bag of chips. Amen. Come on. You're, 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 again, breathe. Yep, you're still breathing, so then you got the problems, okay, so. That's always a good test for you, right? Yeah. If I'm breathing, I'm, I'm struggling, right? I'm going through all this kind of stuff. But I finally found out that, Lord, I did it. I did it. And I'm taking my hand, I'm opening my hands up and saying, I'm not holding on to this anymore. Because, again... I, I got the right to be mad, right? <laughs> they did this and they did that. Did you see what that kid just did? Yeah, boy. Okay. Did you see that boy? Did you see that girl up there, Lord? Yeah, I saw her. I made her. You know. Okay. What you getting her eyes over there for, son? You know, go <laughs> somewhere else, right? I don't have that bondage to sin anymore. I've been freed from it. Look at this. Man's way is to try to overcome sin, right? That's what we do. I'm, I'm working my way through it. I'm, I'm getting through. I'm doing the best I can. 
How many times have you asked someone, well, are, are you going to heaven? Well, I'm doing the best I can. Well, that ain't working then, is it, bud? Because if you're doing the best you can, you've lost. Because it says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Amen? But I'm trying to overcome it on my own. I can do this and, I can, and I, I'm fighting, you know. I'm putting up the good fight and all this kind of stuff. No. God's way is to remove the sinner. We've been crucified. I have died on the cross. It's, unless the word of God is false, then my way of thinking is right, right? But my way of thinking is wrong. His way is right. His way is truth. The word of God is true. He removed me out of the equation. He removed me out of the equation where it's not about what I do or I got to do this and I got to do that and, and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. If it's any of that, it's not Jesus, right? It's either going to be about you or it's going to be about Jesus. And your righteousness is as filthy rags and you will not get there by working your way to heaven. But that's what the world tells us. That's what our big brain teaches us, that I can work my way to heaven. How many people are, are trying to make up for the things that they did when they were kids, right? Or, or doing now as an adult, right? Well, if I, if I do so many bad things and then I do so many good things, they, they balance each other out and then I'll go to heaven. It makes sense to our stupid brain, I mean our brains. Did I have it right the first time? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I did. <laughs> See? You're a little sharp, I'm telling you. But that's what we think. It'll balance out in the end. If that's the case, Jesus didn't need to die. Why would he come here and let him punch him in the mouth? Rip out his beard. Nail him to a cross and die? One of the most horrible deaths you could possibly imagine on this earth. They were good at being cruel. And he just said, okay, I'll do it. He said, no one forced him to do it. He gave up his life. He laid down on that cross. They didn't have to shove him down, him kicking and screaming like everybody else. I bet you those other two guys were like, no, man, they were fighting everything else. Right? He just laid down and said, here you go. Nail me down. Nail me down. <clears throat> I died on that cross with you. I can't overcome sin. Say, I can't overcome sin. I can't overcome sin. Boy, I can't overcome sin. I can't do it. No matter what I do, I can't do it. God's way is to deliver us from the sin. To, God's way to deliver us from the sin is not to make us stronger and stronger. I need to get stronger. That's what it is. I know what it is. I just got to get stronger. No. He makes us weaker and weaker. When I realize, I got no place else to go, Lord. I can't do this on my own. I can't do this on my own at all. I don't have any ability to do this. Now, if you don't do this, Lord, it's not going to get done. I have no power to do this on my own. I can do all things through Christ, through Christ who strengthens me. I'm in Him, and through Him I can do everything. Right? But it's only through Him. I have to go through Him. But I can't get myself strong enough to overcome all this and to work my way into heaven. Can't do it. It's not going to happen. God makes us weaker and weaker all the time. Once we realize I got no place else to go, I have to say, okay, Lord, I'm totally dependent on you. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves. First thing, first thing, humble themselves. I can't do this. I need you completely. There is no way around it. And I get weaker and weaker and weaker. And when I realize that, I can completely rely on Him. I can stop picking it up myself. And I'm going to do this. And i got to do that. I'm going to lay this stuff down. I'm done with it. I can't do it. And He finally goes, thank you. Now I can pick it up. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. He does. He says, thank you. Come unto me, all you heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Yes. Take my burden upon me, upon yes. you. For my burden is easy and my yoke is light.
God doesn't help us do anything. Help us do anything. He crucified us. He killed us. Thus removing us from action altogether. My actions can't do this. My actions can't do that. It's not dependent upon me. It's not dependent upon me at all. Verse 8. That's long between verse 7 and 8 there. Mm -hmm. Verse 8. Now if we died with Christ, which the word says we did, right? Mm -hmm. We believe that we shall also live with him. I believe it. I know it. Just like the, I know that my sins were forgiven. I know that I will live with him. Not live fighting against him or fighting against anyone else, but I'm living in him, right? Mm -hmm, yes. I'm just following along with him, saying, Lord, whatever you want me to do. That's why I never, we don't make any decision without praying first and saying, Lord, you show us. I don't know nothing. That's <laughs> literally what I say every time. Well, I don't know anything. Should we get new floors in our house? I don't know anything, Lord, you tell me. If, if this is right for, for us, you show it. If you say no, I ain't going to do nothing. I am not moving until I hear from you. If my people are called by my name, humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven. Amen. Forgive their sins, heal their land. Heck of a deal. Heck of a deal. But I need to live with him. I need to live my daily walk. If I die with Christ, I need to walk and believe that I'm walking in him. It takes the work off of me. Yes. I'm doing this and I'm doing that and everything. But I can't do it and I can't. Oh, I'm struggling and I'm fighting my way through it. You'll do that your whole life. You will do that till the day you drop. But it's not about what I can do or what I can't do. It's about Him doing it already. It's done. It's finished. Verse 9. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. He's, not, he's already raised from the dead. He's not going to die again, right? He's already conquered death. He's already beat it. He dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. It doesn't rule over him any longer. So if I'm dead in him, then it doesn't have dominion over me. I had, so, Like I say, I've had, I had things that were ruling over me. Ruling over me. Boy, I, I can't get rid of this anger. I can't get rid of this or, or that or whatever. Lust. I know there's no lust in this world anymore, is there? <laughs> there is lust in this world anymore, isn't there? Yeah, imagine that. All types of different lusts. Lust for power and authority. Lust for everyone to see me and everything else, right? Yes, But it doesn't have to rule over me. It ruled over me. It ruled over me till I laid down and said, I'm dead. I'm dead. I got to die to this. I am over it because I can't do it. It's not up to me. You killed me. Let me stay dead. Right? Don't drag the dead cat up there again. When he died, he died once to break the power of sin. I needed him to break the power of sin over me. See, I knew he, he forgave me of my sins, right? But I needed him to break the power of sin over me. Because it's a tough taskmaster. He can get old saying, Lord, I did it again. I did it again. How can you forgive me? But he says, if we confess our sins, faithful and just forgives our sins and cleanses the fall on righteousness, right? Lord, I did it. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. So if we're doing what, what Jesus is doing, we're going to follow him. And, and just as he's living, I want to live for the glory of God. It is a joyous thing. It is an easy thing because I'm not doing anything anymore. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Never will. Can't work. Not going to happen. I want to live for His glory rather than my glory. But I want everyone to see me and how awesome I am. Because I'm just so awesome. I met myself. I'm really awesome. And you're so blessed to have me. I heard, there you go. Oh, I like that. Oh. I heard a brother.
brother on TV the other day saying that he realized who he was and he was he pitied God for having to have him. I'm sorry, you've got to have someone like me, Lord, because I know who I am. I know I'm not worthy to come before your throne of mercy and grace. I'm not worthy, and I'm so sorry that I couldn't be any better than this. And you've got to deal with me now. And he's going, now I got you. Now we got this thing going right. In you, there is no good whatsoever. Not your head, no good whatsoever. Not at all. But in Him, He washes me. He cleanses me. He forgives me. He takes away the sins of the world, right? He takes away the sin of the world. But if I'm holding on to that sin because I got the right to, or I like this one, you know? Yeah, a lot of them we like. I like this one, you know? I like everyone looking at me and saying, boy, I'm so great and everything. That's sin. I'm putting myself yeah, in front of God. I'm the Lord your God. You have no other gods before me, including me. If I'm putting myself as God, I'm taking his place. Couldn't get past the first one. <laughs> Couldn't get past the first commandment. Can't do it. But he's broken the power. He lives just like he did. Now I want to live before God. Amen. Verse 11. So you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Christ Jesus. Consider yourself dead to sin. The power of sin. Sin's got a sin's powerful. Right? And it's a tough, tough taskmaster. It will make you miserable. Amen. How would I know that? Hello. Been there, done that. Tough taskmaster. I'd rather someone come up and tell me the truth rather than sugarcoat it and smooth it all over and say, well, brother, I've got it all together here when you all do. You know, how would you learn anything from that? I've been sitting years and years ago, of course, under, under the tutelage of pastors that made it out to be so all this grandiose stuff and all sort of stuff. Wait a minute, we're about where I'm living here. You know, I left feeling worse than when I walked in. <laughs> right? Amen. It happens all the time. Yes, oh, hit me again, brother. I need to know that I'm just this terrible, awful, <laughs> awful thing and everything. Boy, I, I need that now. You're challenging me. <laughs> challenging me. I don't need, I just need to lay down and die. And be living through Him. That's all. That's all. The same one that forgave me that way gives me power over sin. I consider myself dead to the power of sin. It has no more dominion over me. And I'm alive to Him. It takes all the works off of me. Look at this. Verse 14. Sin is no longer your master. Isn't that a great... Man, if we could go just through that first part of that verse. Mm -hmm. Sin is no longer your master for the things that keep getting you all worked up in a, in a tizzy. It's no longer your master. According to the Word of God, right? right. But if I'm fighting it and I'm doing this and everything else, I'm losing for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. The requirements of the law said, Thou shalt, and thou shalt, and thou shalt, mm -hmm. and thou shalt not, and thou shalt not. Mm -hmm. It's all about what I do and what I don't do. I'm not living under that any longer. Instead, you live, or, live under the freedom of God's grace. The freedom of His grace. Now, of course, he says, should we continue to sin so grace may abound? Absolutely not. Don't get stupid with it, right? No, but I'm free. I am free, praise God. I like freedom to live in, under God's grace. Look at this. John 15, 4 says, Jesus speaking, by the way, if you didn't know. says, abide in me or live in me. And I in you, 
He says, like, well, I stay at the door or not, right? If anyone opens the door, I'll come into, into him and sup with him, right? I want him inside me. Supping, having, having a, a conversation with me, having communion with me. Communion is a powerful thing, amen? amen? As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I'm living in him. Not living through me and going through and doing my own thing. Your kingdom come. Not my kingdom. Not my will be done, but your will be done. I don't have to do anything. It's all done. Either he has done everything on the cross, or I'm in a world of hurt. I just am. But we cannot bear fruit by ourselves. What's the fruit? Peace, joy, love, right? Self-control. I got none of that. If I'm on my own, I cannot bear that kind of fruit on my own. I can't do it. But if I'm living in Him, He says I am. We say, if I could just abide in Christ, all would be well. But I simply can't. I can't do it. Remember Beth, I always, we miss her. She's, she's still alive, by the way. She just moved over to Alabama. She was saying, I always wanted to die in church. She wanted to die in church because this is where the peace was at. She could always come in here and you're in the presence of God, right? right. And she was saying, boy, if I could just come in here all the time, if I didn't have to go outside mm -hmm. these walls, if I didn't have to go out there in the, where the world is at, where I'm alone, and where everything's going crazy and all that. If I can stay in here and praise his holy name, right? That's why we lead in with praise. Just like they did in the Old Testament. They go into battle. They will send out the praisers first. Mm -hmm. Who does that? Now we send our tanks out there first, right? right. Or now the missiles. We send them in first, right? Or the troops. But praise God. Or the troops. Right. Yeah. But I can't abide in him by myself. I can't do it by myself, but he says, come unto me while you're heavy laden. He makes it. I can't do that, but I can't do it on my own. I can't do all this. He says, I'm the vine. You're the branches. We get this straight, right? We get this straight. He's the vine. We're the branches. The branches are connected to, right? I heard a guy once say that, that I'm just trying to get the sap from out of the, the vine into my branch to where I can and hold on to it, right? Get that, that nourishment and that good stuff out of him. He said, but I can't do it. He said, but he who abides in me or lives in the vine and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. You can do nothing. But as long as I'm just saying, okay, Lord, I am a branch. He says, I am a branch. You are the branches. I'm a branch, praise God, and I am connected to him. I don't have to try to get all the good stuff out of him. It's already coming. All I have to do is say, thank you. Thank you, Lord. I receive it. I accept it just like I did salvation. The same thing. Lord, thank you for dying for my sins, Lord God. Thank you for cleansing me and taking all my sins away. See, he's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. But if I'm holding on to him, one of us is going to carry him. Yes. One of us is going to carry him. Either I'm going to carry him or he is. I'm not a pack mule. I'm a lamb. Right? Yeah. Lambs aren't meant to carry stuff. No. Right? right? He is the Lamb of God. Take all this stuff away, Lord God. I can't do anything. We must accept that we are branches in Him. We are in Him. If we're branches, He says we're branches. Amen? Amen? Then we are in Him. We keep saying, I'm so terrible. I'm not living the saintly life that I see others living. Oh. <laughs> Have we ever done something like, oh boy, I see brother so-and-so or their sister so-and-so, man, she reads her Bible uh, 10 hours a day and she's just so saintly and she's doing this and that and everything. We're comparing ourselves to one another. And I just can't, I'm just not good enough. Oh my goodness, and you feel worse. Does that make you ever feel better? No, it doesn't make you feel better. It makes you feel like garbage, right? Because they're doing things that you 
are doing, are they believers? Yeah. More, uh, if they're born again, yeah, they are. If you're born again, are you a believer? Yeah. Going to the same heaven? Pretty much. I think I don't think there's two different heavens, you know. We're not one of those that says, well, you got to go to one place before, and then we'll pray you out of there to get into heaven. Not going to happen. Not in the Word of God. Not going to happen. And we'll sometimes say, am I even a Christian? Nod your head if you've ever done that. Of course you have. Just nod your head. You know you've done it, right? Am I even a believer? Everybody else is doing all these amazing things, and I'm just sitting over here doing nothing. I can't do it. I'm, I'm just worthless. Yeah. Yeah, you're a believer. You say, I want to live this victorious life. Why not? I'm going to live like so-and-so is doing and everything. Else. But I just can't do it. I keep trying. Did you catch that? I keep trying. I keep trying to do this. And I keep trying to do that. And I keep trying. Irrelevant. Absolutely irrelevant. Doesn't make any difference what you do. It's what he did. I don't see any way of getting out of there. Right? That's what we say. How many times have we been and every last one in here, if you're honest, will say, I've been in a place where I say, I don't even know how to get out of this. Yeah. You don't. Yeah. You don't get out of it. You just come and say, oh, Lord, you have already done this for me. Thank you, Lord. All I have to do is say thank you. We need to stop. <laughs> this may sound weird, weird, right? We need to stop. Praying so much, oh Lord, do this and Lord, do that. He's already done it. We need to start praising. Amen. Praising because He's already done it. Thank you, Lord, that you set me free from bondage of sin. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for healing my body because His Word says by His stripes we are healed. I don't have, oh Lord, heal me, Lord. Already done. You know, what are you talking about? It's already done. Done a couple thousand years ago. Look, look at this. See that water bottle? Let, let's, let's just say that that water bottle could pray. Okay? Makes sense, right? Let me... That's a water bottle. Okay, let's say that water bottle can pray. And that water bottle is saying, Lord God Almighty, please make me a water bottle. Please make me a water bottle, Lord. I keep trying to be a water bottle. And I can't get there. And he's going, son, you are a water bottle. You are one. And we keep praying for God to do something that he's already done. He's already forgiven us. Why? He's done everything. On the cross he said it is finished. It's over. It's all done. Nothing left to do. I don't have to pray to be a victorious Christian. He said, I am one. Amen. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. He's already made him to be sin for me because I did it. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. You are the righteousness of God. Tommy. You're the righteousness of God, brother. Mm -hmm. Or else well, the word of God is false. Mm -hmm. I'll put my faith in what God says rather than what my angry brain says. Mm -hmm. I am the righteousness of God because I put my trust in Him, not in my own ability. I can't keep praying, Lord, make me a water bottle. Jesus. Make me a better water bottle. Well, you're holding water, aren't you? Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> How much more do you need? We forget sometimes that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He has given it to us. He's already done everything. Now, when we get to the point to where we find ourselves doing things, I'm not going to hold on to that sin, right? I don't care how much right I have to be right. Mm -hmm. Dead man doesn't have any rights. Doesn't have right to be right or wrong. Right? 
I don't have the right to be right. I don't have the right to be wrong. I'm dead, right? I'm not holding on. If, if these hands are dead, how am I still holding on to sin, right? But I want to do this. I like this one, Lord. I like doing that one, so I'm going to keep doing that. But I got the right to be mad. I got the right to do this and everything. Lord, you have set me free. You have made me free. The truth shall make you free. See, we need to know him better. Any of these messages from anyone ever, it's got to be a new revelation of anything, it's got to be a new revelation of Him, a better revelation of Him, so that we understand the truth better. He is the truth, right? He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by Him, and I need to understand Him better. That's it. I just need to get it. I need to get it better. I don't understand, so I keep trying to do this, and I keep trying to do that, and everything else. Surrender, Lord. I can't do any of this. But you have already done it. Thank you for making me victorious to where I don't have to do this and I don't I, all this other stuff. Praise God. He came to make us free. To set us free from the law of sin and death. The law of saying, I've got to do this and I've got to do that. I like freedom. Been in bondage, didn't like it, didn't like it at all. Why do we keep going back into bondage? We keep picking it up ourselves and wanting to do it. And, oh Lord, thank you for what you have done. You've done everything, Lord. And all of a sudden, all these things that bother you so bad, they keep trying to to crop itself up all over over again, all the time. All of a sudden, I'm set free from that. I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to to be in bondage to lust or to anger or to pride or anything else. He said, be free from it. It's over. It's done. Praise God. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the finished work that you did. And I don't have to add anything to it as if I could do something. My goodness. Lord, how arrogant of us to think that I have to add something because you didn't do a complete work. No, Lord, you did it all, and I got no right to do anything. If I'm doing something, Lord, all I'm going to do is mess it up, and that's exactly what we do. Just, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and I mess it up. But if I just relax and receive what you have done, Lord God, you make me free from the bondage of sin and death. Thank you, Lord, for all the people that you brought here today, Lord, every one. Thank you for our visitors, Lord. Thank you for the ones that, that you have called in here, Lord God. And we know there's a lot of our people out. That's okay. Uh, but, Lord God, we thank you that you're here. Thank you, Lord, for as we go through this week, through this day, let us not go through the rest of this day without remembering, Lord God, that it's not about me. It's not about anything that I did or going to do or anything else, Lord. It's all about you. And I receive what you have done. You have set me free from the bondage of sin and death, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, as we go. Lord, let us go forth remembering and rejoicing that we can walk in peace and freedom. We thank you for it now, Lord. We claim it as our own. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. If there's anyone who likes some prayer, come on up and let's see what God will do. Amen. You're dismissed.